Meantime, the opposition has stepped up pressure on the government over high-speed rail. Shadow Transport Minister Anthony Albanese introduced a private members bill today, which would take the first steps towards a super-fast rail network being built. Anthony Albanese is speaking now with Sky News political editor David Spears in Canberra. Anthony Albanese, thank you for your time. This private members bill you've introduced today would establish a planning authority, something Labor had promised in government to establish. Why is that needed if there is no decision yet on whether to actually build a high-speed rail network? Look, it's necessary to make sure that you, at the first instance, preserve the corridor. If we don't make decisions today to advance high-speed rail, it will become impossible tomorrow because uh, urban growth and urban sprawl will make the corridor are unworkable. That's why we established a process, recommendations from people like Tim Fisher, the former Deputy Prime Minister, Jennifer Westacott from the Business Council of Australia, recommended the establishment of an authority. That's what this private members bill would do with representatives of each of the jurisdictions and private sector expertise to make sure that the planning work and the preservation of the corridor was there. We put $52 million in the budget uh, to do that end. And and unfortunately, uh, the coalition took that money out of last sure, month's but, budget. But urban sprawl isn't anything new. It's been going on and on and on for some time. Why, in the six years you were in government, didn't this happen? Well, we had the study that uh, recommended only in June of last year. So we responded as soon as we could uh, to that study that recommended this process. It was a very detailed study, David. It outlined, and it was there, all there on the website, still there on the Infrastructure Department website, a very precise corridor a precise uh, number of stations, even the design of the stations has all been done. You've got to do this planning work. This is about long-term vision for the nation, which would enable people to go three hours from Sydney to Melbourne or Sydney to Brisbane, but importantly also for regional cities such as uh, Canberra, but right along the route, Port Macquarie, Albury, Wodonga, would be a real generator of that regional economic activity that would, would remove some of the pressure that's on our big capital cities. Can I turn to an article in the Australian newspaper today by Troy Bramston, suggesting that you have been an unremitting critic of Bill Shorten and are guilty of undeniable treachery. Have you been undermining the leader? Well, Troy Bramson, of course, is a, a failed factional operative who's now become a writer of fiction. Uh, the truth is that uh, I've been very loyal uh, to Bill. Bill knows that, and he said that this morning. Uh, what this morning's article is, is a series of assertions and hearsay with nothing to back it up. Uh, the one quote from anybody that's in there is a quote from uh, Bob Carr's book that uh, wasn't known to me before today. But uh, Sam Dastyari has confirmed to the Senate uh, today that that is not true, that indeed my well, let, position... Let me tell you what the was quote the was. The quote from in, in Bob Carr's diaries, when he stated support for Julia Gillard, uh, he, he gets a call from Sam Dastyari telling him that he was taking calls from Chris Bowen and Anthony Albanese, that he had undermined their pro-Rudd campaign. So were you campaigning for Rudd? No, th and that's not true, and Sam Dastyari has uh, confirmed that that indeed uh, the only conversation I had with him, uh, which is a similar conversation that I had with a lot of people around this building, was that people should shut up about the internals and should get on with the business of governing. That's what I did as Leader of the House, just as now I'm getting on with the business of holding the government to account. Well, he also points to uh, criticism of Bill Shorten's decision to keep Joe Bullock at the top of Labor's Senate ticket in WA. You weren't a fan of that. Uh, no, I wasn't, and that was uh, on the record in terms of the national executive. Uh, the national executive, uh, I had a view that uh, we shouldn't uh, just re-endorse the ticket prior to uh, the, uh, the court case being held. Uh, so my views uh, there were known. I argued that case within the party. And uh, do you regard that, wasn't that as successful. being disloyal to the leader at all? Not, not at all. That's about uh, the best interests of the Labor Party and putting my views uh, forward without fear or favour uh, mm. on the national executive. That's something that I've always done. But it goes on to speak about alleged leaking. I mean, that was a, a publicly available information. It uh, shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that I was uh, more supportive of Louise Pratt than I was of Joe Bullock. Uh, that's just a, a fact. But it goes on also to suggest, for example, that I was responsible for uh, an article that uh, leaked uh, Bill Shorten's uh, 
speech in terms of party, party reform. reform. I didn't even have that speech. Bill and I had not had an opportunity to talk due to personal circumstances, uh, miscommunication, but I wasn't aware of what was in his speech till I read it in the paper. Do you think Bill Shorten is doing a good job as leader now? And can I ask you specifically where there has been some internal uh, tension on the issue of East Jerusalem? Has he, has he done the right thing there? Oh, look, I think Bill is doing a good job. I mean, there's talk about internal tension. I've seen none of it. I've seen no debate uh, about that issue and no difference of opinion uh, about that issue. Uh, what I think is that Bill's done a good job of holding the government to account. Uh, straight after the leadership ballot, it required two things given that Bill and I contested uh, against each other. One was it required a generosity of spirit from Bill as the leader towards myself. Uh, that had certainly has certainly occurred. I was able to choose a portfolio of my own choosing. I was able to appoint staff. I was able to get on with the business of making a contribution. And secondly, it required me uh, to get on with the business of making a contribution. I've done that in my policy area. I think we've ripped their so-called infrastructure uh, budget. The, the infrastructure con apart piece by piece very effectively and uh, also uh, I've been offering strategic advice to Bill as an experienced person who was leader of the house and manager of opposition so no, no business. Bitterness. Not at all. And what about your future? Would you have a crack again for, for leader after the next election? Well, I, I expect that Bill will win the next election and he'll be Prime Minister. If he doesn't, and though, will you put your hand I, up? I expect he will win the next election and be Prime Minister, and I will certainly be, uh, be happy to serve. That will probably see out my, my time, because I expect that it will be a long-term... You mean the next term will see out your time? No, no, a, a long-term Labor government. Right. Uh, so we'll wait and see uh, how long I'm... You're uh, not going at, this, I, uh, I, at the I, next election? I serve in that. Uh, David, I've, uh, I've put a fair bit of effort into uh, building up a, a knowledge of this place, of uh, developing uh, policy expertise in the area of infrastructure, transport and now tourism. I want to implement uh, those things. I want to see the second airport for Sydney built. So I want to see right. high-speed rail advanced. Uh, I'm here for the long haul. And speaking of that experience, the National Review into uh, Labor's election performance at the last election obviously found that disunity was a big problem. It criticised elements of the, the Rudd campaign. Do you believe there were problems in how that campaign was fought? Look, given the circumstances in which there was a change of leadership uh, just prior to the election being called, of course uh, things don't run as smoothly as they would uh, had uh, there been a continuity of leadership from 2007 right through. But under the circumstances, there's no doubt the National Secretary, George Wright, said at the National Press Club, that uh, Kevin Rudd returning to the leadership saved 25 seats. I think that is certainly the case. Uh, Kevin Rudd led uh, an outstanding campaign, uh, in my view. The fact that uh, this uh, report has been released, the 2010 report was never released. Uh, it's been released out there so that people can see uh, essentially the, the minor uh, issues that were there, sure, but, but those, overall... They, they might be minor, but do you think he could have won the campaign, won the election with a better campaign? I think under the circumstances it was always the case, and the report says this, and uh, certainly Kevin was conscious of this as well when he uh, retook uh, the uh, Prime Ministership, that the odds were against Labor winning. Uh, all the, uh, the polls always indicated that, uh, but we're in a position now as a result of uh, the campaign and, and in particular seats, but I think the national campaign, that we're competitive. We're in a position today whereby if we get the same result at the next election that we got in 1998, Bill Shorten will be living in the lodge. And uh, that's remarkable given where we were at. Uh, at, uh, at this time, uh, just uh, 12 months ago, and I think uh, George Wright and Kevin Rudd and, uh, and absolutely as well, it must be said, Julia Gillard for the way that she uh, held herself with a great deal of dignity and support for the campaign as well. Um, you know, Labor united for that campaign and uh, it, had she reacted differently, uh, certainly the outcome uh, wouldn't have been as positive as it was, but we're in a position to form government. Uh, what we've got to do now is continue to hold them to account, but also build new policies for the next campaign. Anthony Albanese, thanks for joining us. Good to be with you.
That was the former Labor leadership contender, now opposition frontbencher Anthony Albanese, strongly denying there some reports that have been around today that he's been backgrounding against the opposition leader Bill Shorten. Mr Albanese there insisting there is no bitterness between him and Mr Shorten, who he says is doing a good job. We'll have more analysis for you on that story and the other political issues around coming up for you in just under an hour's time on the Lunchtime Agenda.